Uh, Judy, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, go on, JJ. All righty. I am a licensed. No, no, not that one. <laughs> I'm a I'm a licensed independent social worker, and I'm an attorney. I live here in Cleveland, Ohio. That's why you see my fireplace in the background because it's cold. It was 70 degrees, and now the temperature dropping. Mm. Okay. And I was see, home, so home, is, home of former LeBron, huh? That's right. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. It was really just wonderful listening to your last guest. And, and actually, my, my books are right in line with what she was talking about. Um, because, you know, I wanted to raise awareness. And I used my fiction as a way to do that. I used to be the client rights officer at the Cuyahoga County Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health Board. And now I'm a magistrate judge in family court here in Cleveland. Nice, and nice. my book has a huge, huge um, abuse theme, an incest theme. And mm. what I was really mm. struck by what the doctor said is about, you know, how people groom children. And it's even deeper when it's a relative that does that, because you know oh, what? Yeah. People still love their relatives. You know what? You still love the people who are related to you, even if they do something you don't like. And if it's somebody who is in power, who takes care of you, you know, you still need to have your clothes. You still need to have shelter. You still need to have food. And that puts that child in a really serious situation because they still do love those people and they need them to take care of them. And it makes them even more conflicted. Mm. And that's what I wanted, you know, to talk about in my novels. Yeah. It, it, it's, 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 it's very, very interesting. Um, when we really talk about, you know, I, and I mean, one thing we didn't even John alluded to it, but to talk about the 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 the, the eternal impact, right? So lifetime impact that these type of abuses, you know, that they did to people and to individuals, and then to follow up with it, if that makes sense. Like there's there's you know, what am I doing, and then what they how they interacted with other people, right. you know. So, you know, I'm 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 glad that you 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 chimed that in. Um, so, a social worker also deals with people, right? And so, yes. So, one of the, how has been a social worker impacted your navigation the spaces where, where mental health issues have been prominent? And I guess you could also touch on some of what the previous authors could could those abuses do lead to mental health issues. Mm. So maybe you could mm. talk about that as well. I would love to talk about that. That's what my, my novel, The Anniversary, is about. Is that when you have people, I believe that mental health issues are born out of unresolved trauma. So if you're dealing with traumatic things that are happening to you and you never have a chance to resolve them, sooner or later, they they you know, they just they comes out. And oftentimes it comes out in in a way that can be negative. And it also um, sometimes is mental health, mental health issues. And if you, you know, what we need to do is to be able to talk about what's happening and we need to, you know, be able to have spaces that are safe for these discussions because there's a lot of stigma, particularly in the African-American community around mental health. You know, we're told, you know what, you survived slavery. We survived so much. What you mean? You got a problem. Yeah, you can handle it. You can deal with it. And sometimes we can't. And it's oftentimes what we need is the place to have a, a discussion. So I've seen it throughout my career, which is why I wanted to, to put it in a novel, have my characters deal with this and navigate, you know, these type of issues. I hope I answered the question. Yeah, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Um, so your book is called The Anniversary. Why is That's that? the first book. Uh -huh. Yes. It's called the anniversary because when people think about anniversaries, we often think about good things, fun things, you know, but all anniversaries are not good. An example, 9-11 is, <laughs> a, is an anniversary. That is sorry, a national anniversary. I'm Which sorry. Did you say? I didn't hear the anniversary talk about because somebody I said not me. all anniversaries are good. Some anniversaries, you know, like 9-11. We, 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 that we have that every year. The anniversary of 9 11 is something we have, you know, all kind of different, you know, events that happen. But it actually 
commemorate something that was sad that happened to our country. For yeah, many absolutely. people, they're dealing with issues. They're dealing with anniversaries. You don't know about them. You don't know that today was a bad day for me because this is the day five years ago that my father died. Or this is the day that something else happened that's bad. So that's the reason why I wanted to name it that. You know, my editor, when I first was going to name it that, was like, what are you doing? What does it mean? I don't get it. And then she read the book and said, okay, I see why you named it that. We're not going to mess with the title. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and that that makes, makes sense. Tell us a little bit more about the book, though. You know, um, my characters are dealing with a lot of different events. Um, so the first book's the anniversary, the second book is the commemoration, and in the second book, I'm also dealing with human trafficking, sickle cell disease, along with the mental health. And what made me want to interject those topics into my novel is when I worked at the Adams Board of Cuyahoga County, I did have occasion to work with human trafficking victims. And what I do want people to know is that human trafficking isn't always sex. We have people who are dealing with human trafficking. There is human slavery. And I want people to know that. And I also want people to know that human trafficking just doesn't happen to women. I've dealt with all kinds of men who've been victims of human trafficking. And I've dealt with a lot of men who've been victims of sexual trauma. You know, And it's it, not always it, men that do it. Women do it too. It, it's, 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 you know, it, 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 it is the issue. Um, it, if I can just inter mm -hmm. interject, this is when you look at the the R. Kelly situation and the impact that him being sexually abused at a young age, the way it shaped his ideology and his intellect when dealing with with women. I just want to throw that out to you. Well, well he's duplicating what it is that he actually um, experienced. He's putting out his frustration. He's actually sharing the way that he learned. Unfortunately, it is a mental um, mental problem, but he is re reacting everything that it is that he experienced. Reenacting. Yeah, yeah. reenacting. And, you. So, so you, you know, you're touching a very good point, and, and, and I don't want that point to go away. It's not going away. No, no, no. What I'm saying is a lot of time parents overprotect their daughters and don't look at their sons. Mm -hmm. I agree. Right? They overprotect their daughters. And and it, 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 one thing, you know, I, maybe I'm going off tangent a little bit. Even the court system does the same thing. Because if a woman is charged with statutory rape on a boy, she gets less time on average than a male on a statutory rape on a girl. Absolutely. And so there, so it, so so it, it does create a bias and an unjust system mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where, you know, it's not it's, as a, as a culture, we don't look at male child abuse as the same level as female child abuse. And well, I, I want to thank now, you. Now, not even now. now, even now, it's not even now it's because now with the now whole it on the perpetrator, it's yeah. the perpetrator. If it's a male perpetrator perpetrating against a male, yes, everybody yes. you know makes a really big deal about it. But if it's a female perpetrator, and That's that was the purpose at. of my book, because right. women cause damage to boys too when they sexually abuse them. You have yeah. boys that are sexually abused by women, and other men and boys go, "Man, she taught you." Yeah, you lucky. You hype up. It, yeah. it, it might not be penetration, but it might be other form of of of, of sexual inappropriate behaviors. Mm. You know, so that it, you know, people have to look at that as well. You know, it's 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 not just always about penetration. Well, you know, penetration, penetration, right? It's 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 what is this abuse? Um, you know, and and I'm sure in 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 your line of work, you have come across a lot of a lot of different things that have affected your justification for writing these two books, these, um, hello, Anne-Marie, uh, it is very prevalent. Yes, it is, right? How, um, yes, more prevalent than people think. And what's yes. important is, is from, a, like, as a lawyer, okay, just looking at it from a legal perspective, one reason why I think that 
women are not charged the way men are is they don't leave evidence the way men do. You got to remember that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But also our, our community looks at this, like this guy got taught. He was lucky that some older woman took the interest to teach him about sex, but you can also cause people to have um, serious mental health issues from that. When they're mm -hmm. kids, and this is so, this is not what they should be having it's, to deal with. Their innocence is being taken from them. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and 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 you know, and it no, it's 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 not a stripe on it, it. But you know what? It goes the same way, right? So like a man who has multiple partners is considered a jock. A woman who has multiple partners is considered a, a slut. So you know, it, it's not even at the. It's not even. It's not even fair. Either way. Um, how you look at it. Um, well, you know what? Why are we concerned about how others look at it? Because, you know, reason, we, we can't get, you no, know, no, what, what I'm saying is, you know, why are we, why are we getting caught up in labels or it, it, it is that individual, you know, we don't know why she chooses to sleep or God, whatever it is. My whole point was, you know, why do we have to Label, why do we have to even concentrate on what someone thinks about you? The, the reason why I said that, John, and um, and uh, I'm gonna allow a uh, novelist Winston to chime in, which is the perception and the look affect how we react or interact with it. So, if a, if a boy is hyped up because he is touched by an older woman, right, by a woman or a female, it has a different look than when a young girl is touched, no matter if it's by a boy of his age or older, right? It, 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 it's, it's, it's a notch. So that's why we now, in a program like this, have to come out and say, hey, it's not right either way. No, 100%. Right? So we also tell children um, these things as well as, uh, as, uh, as about issues we face, asking them what they are worried about. What kind of issues you have as a child, or you are just a child, right? What are what are your thoughts on that? How 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 does the, imp the affect or impact the characters? How does the how do these things affect the 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 impact or the characters in your books? And also, I want you to tell us, like, give us a little something more about your book while you're at it. When you I'm say give you something the more like why I wrote it or what it's about, like what's so I can just understand. I guess I guess what what, what, what what Mr. Daly's trying to say, how does those events or, 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 or those issues really impact your writing? You know, how, how the the they those 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 those, those situations, those inc incidents, they manifest how, how how do they manifest through your writing? You know, in my in my practice. My career, I've seen this happen over and over and over again, where I see people who are having these issues and, and they develop mental health problems, severe mental health problems sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, very severe. And I've seen this over and over and over. And I said, you know what? I really do need to do something about this. And I felt that writing a story that's fiction where people can actually relate to my characters but also learn about mental health at the mm -hmm. same time. But, but that see, was the you, whole purpose. But but you see, you see, JJ, the whole point in, in, in like one of your characters, the, the coming out of prison, uh, reintegrating back in society, the pros and the cons, the pitfalls that that person faces. But however, you know, why did that person have to go to prison in the first place? What background what situations led him oh i see, or her I see your question. to that point my my character is involved in a serious tragedy of one of his children mm. due to being psychotic mm. oh, okay. because he learns some very serious information that really makes him you know become ill and I think that happens a lot, particularly, you know, again, I'm only going to speak to me and my community. I've seen people with family secrets 
Mm. That once people find out about it, it can make them become sick. And that's what kind of happened to my character in the book without giving too much away. You know, is that my character finds out some serious, you know, news and it leads to a tragedy that leads, puts him in a situation where he has to go to prison, you know, and I, I think that happens more often than not, because in my career, I've seen people who they find out things they didn't know about themselves. And it's more about us being open and talking to our kids, like what your last guest talked about, being open, all these secrets is what's hurting us as a community. But you think you're helping your family member by not telling them some of these things. But later on, when they find out, they're very angry. Mm -hmm. And they feel like they've been taken advantage of. And people feel like, what I thought about my life is not true. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, that can really manifest itself in, in some serious issues. So that's what the reason why I decided to put that in a book over... Um, the course of my career, I've seen the same things over and over, over, over and over. over and over. Yeah, and 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 those things are are so scary. You also did some work on sickle cell anemia. You have sickle cell anemia. Yeah. Ad group. Let's talk about that. Well, you know, just to give you guys a little bit of background, when I was eight years old, my father died from sickle cell anemia. Mm. Um, and then after he passed away, I found out that my grandmother passed away from sickle cell anemia. I had two aunts and an uncle that passed away from sickle cell anemia. And when I started dating my husband, you know, that was one of the first questions I was always taught to ask is, you know, do you have sickle cell trait or sickle cell disease? And my husband said no, because he was completely unaware that he was a sickle cell carrier. Mm. And I have a daughter now who lives with a form of sickle cell disease called hemoglobin SC. And additionally, I have a um, I have a niece, a great niece and a great nephew, all living with um, different forms of sickle cell disease. And so in my second book, I wanted to not only stay on my mental health theme, I wanted to introduce sickle cell into my novels because so many of us, even African-American people and people who live here in this country don't know anything about it. And so we're right. marrying people. We're unaware that we're carriers of these genes and our children are being born with sickle cell disease. And I just want people to have awareness and I want to be an advocate because sometimes my daughter is not treated well because when she goes to the hospital, they think she's opioid seeking. So, so this is you, a problem. You know, and, and, and novelist, you, you, you are correct. My, my cousin, he has a sickle cell, same situation, same thing. You know, I, I, I want to share a very sad story. Um, 2006, I, we, you know, I, I, um, my, 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 my brother and I, we had this, we were both teaching at the same place mm -hmm. at the same time. And we started an educational tour around the world. Mm. And our first year of the trip, we took this young man to Spain. Mm. The first trip was to Spain because it's, you know, where I went to school. So I said, Look, let's do that. He got sick. I didn't know that he, we didn't know that as part of the sickle cell, he shouldn't be traveling, especially so far. Or something had to be done for him to travel. I didn't know that when you take mm. a plane. And so we were in Spain. And since it is a primarily a black person disease, sickle cell anemia, it is primarily black. True. When he went to Spain, they had no idea what to do. Mm. And the parents who didn't even realize that was the issue. Mm -hmm. And when I say he took sick, so at that point he was 13, uh, maybe, maybe might have been, he, he's born in February. So maybe I might, might have been 14. Mm -hmm. um, and he was so ill mm. and he could see the pain on his face because mm -hmm. when, when it when it takes over it's in pain and unfortunately the young man and in some way I, I still feel a little bit of guilt like i felt like because we helped him try and reenact re, re what is it not re-upped because mm -hmm. he died two years later wow. the, I, I think either he died the day off or the day right before his birthday wow. one of them with at 16. wow and you know and 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 and, and when we talk about sickle cell uh, and uh, the same doctor that was on one of her mentee 
um, her, that's her specialty. Her mm. specialty, um, Dr. White. Okay. Um, that was on our show a couple of months ago. That's her special to talk about six cells. So I'm glad that you you're advocating and bringing this up because people need to be aware that this disease is debilitating and understanding that you might not have any effect because you might be a carrier, right? As opposed, because right. if you have it, if 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 you have the effects of it, you know, you're full blown. You know the the sickle cell gene, so you want to call it, you know, SS gene. So for those of you understanding um, Mendelian uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, biology, it's it's if you both of your carriers is SS strong, that means one of your kid will not have it. Two will will um, the Punnett square is called. So it's one of your kid would have it, one of your kid will not, and the other two, if you have four children. Will be carriers of the trait. Now it does. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be 25, 25, 50. But you know, obviously, you're playing numbers, so it you know it can work out that you have different levels. Mm -hmm. um, but that's basically. But it's almost a guarantee that if you have four children, one of them will end up with the entire um, sickle cell. So thank you for for um, advocating for that. How would some? How would people know and hear about your your books? Well, my books are everywhere. You can Google me, novelist JJ Winston. My books are at Amazon. My books are at Walmart. My books are all over the web. Um, the name of them are The Anniversary and The Commemoration. And I see somebody wrote something that says you have to do background research on the people you marry. And I agree. But the thing is, you always are going That's to be hard, though. That's hard, isn't it? Tell you that. You know, my husband was unaware that he was a carrier. And I'm going to be honest. Just so we, just to go back to that, I never even heard of hemoglobin SC. I was always told about sickle cell anemia. What I wanted to use my books to do is to let people know there are more than one kind of sickle cell disease. There's actually several sickle cell diseases. And, you know, you may not even realize you're a carrier of one of these genes. So I just want people to be aware of that because folks sometimes don't know. But you can find find my books at my website. My website is www.novelistjjwinston.com. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm available always to speak to all these different issues and topics. I have a YouTube channel and I have just, you know. Uh, Andre wants you to repeat that so you can put it up on the screen. Okay. It's uh, www dot novelist jj winston dot com that's my website and i'm always you know you can buy directly from me and get a autographed copy of my books and i have something called a book bundle that people really really like you know where well, i put I, all I, three books together about what's, what's a book bundle bundle, bundle. I, you get all three of my books for a very um discounted price because i have two i have two novels and a workbook and the workbook I put together because people were going, they really loved my books, but what they were having problems with is they really wanted to know more about what to do when faced with the mental health crisis. So I put a lot of stuff in my book to help people. You know because, what, before you leave, can you elaborate more on ways that, you know, we could support those with mental health? Um, what are some ways that you can, you know, Based on your experience and what you've encountered, what are some ways we can actually support those with mental health? There's a program called the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill, also known as NAMI. They do an awesome program called Family to Family. It's all over the country. If you have a relative, a family member, or even yourself who's dealing with the mental health issue, then you should actually get in touch with that program this, the Family to Family is a free program, and it teaches us about what to do to make our spaces conducive to good mental health. You know, also, I just think that you can find a support group. I think that talking is a good way to get the kind of help you need. Mm -hmm. You know, people need to talk about it. All this secrecy is bad, but we also need to understand that stigma is real. Mm -hmm. yes. Stigma leads to discrimination. And it also leads to prejudice. People are treated badly 
folks are afraid of people when they think there's something going on with them and their mental health. But particularly during this COVID environment we live in, this mm. is really just shining the light on how many people are dealing with anxiety mm-hmm. and all these other issues. It's a scary time. You know, mm-hmm. folks are afraid, you know, about the p- pandemic. So, you know, we just really need to create that type of space in our homes too, to, mm-hmm. to say, you know what, what's going on? And it's okay to tell me, like the doctor said earlier, you know, if there's somebody trying to do something to you, saying something to you, you can always come and talk to me, you know, make sure kids feel safe in doing that. Mm-hmm. That's true. I hope I answered the question. You did. Thank you. Thank you for you the organization what? support. I um, just want to just jump in. Go ahead. This one's to... wait, wait, and... wait, wait. John is interrupting. <laughs> Since we want to, t- this, this is a, another topic. Your thoughts on this whole Kyle Rettenhouse case? A young woman in Kenosha. Wisconsin. When you ask me my thoughts, you mean what? What am I thinking about what's happening with the um, case? The case legally, but also the 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 mental the mental aspects if they exist for a young man 17 years old to engage into behavior like that, you know. Just you know, is is, is the, what I'm just trying to. What, what I'm was gonna his... ask a question, John. Where was his parents? Where was his parents? <laughs> That's what I want to know. I want to know where the parental intervention was. I'm a parent. My kid couldn't walk out the house with an AK-47 and go nowhere <laughs> at 17. <laughs> I just don't understand it. I don't understand it. But I'm just going to be honest. I can't really speak legally about the case as a as a judge. I can't. Um, oh, okay. it's, yes. I'm it's sorry. Our rules. Oh, wait, wait, I do have a question about the judge thing. I do. I, I'm okay. sorry. I have to ask. But you can tell me if you can't legally understand it. Or you can't really speak on it. Sorry. Okay. Don't talk about judge... marijuana. Don't talk about no marijuana. No, no, no I'm not talking about marijuana. That's, that's you and John's topic. When the judge admonished... <laughs> The the prosecutor. I would admire. Yes, him. yes, he did the right thing. I can speak to that. You can speak to that. He did the right yes, thing because he did the right thing. You can't, you can't, as a prosecutor, tell somebody like you can't bring that up in court and say somebody didn't speak because you don't have to speak. It's a violation of your constitutional rights. When they read you your rights, that's the first thing they tell you is you have a right to remain silent. That but anything I, 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 you can, go ahead, finish up. That, that you were reading Miranda right, and it will be used against you in the court of law. They tell you it can and will be used against you. So you have a right. You know, if you say I'm not saying anything, get my lawyer. You have a right to that constitutionally. That, what I, I I guess I watch a lot of Perry Mason. I'm sorry, I, I know I'm segue a little bit from the book, but. The, it's, it's like the lawyer, the defense attorney wasn't objecting. It was like the judge was objecting. Because he violated. And he's supposed to. Because it's this a violation. You can get a mistrial for that. That's a mistrial. That can get you a mistrial. Every, like he said, every first year law student knows that. That's one of the first thing they teach you is that when somebody is arrested and they employ their rights, to be quiet and be silent, you can't bring that up and use it against them in court. Because I don't need to say anything if I don't want to. So you know what? If the judge didn't do it and you just went on, later on somebody could get whatever verdict thrown out based on that. That's why he made such a big deal about it, and you know, got on the the prosecutor for because he yeah, knows I mean, he was, that he, he he was on him like white on rice. Yeah, but that prosecutor, <laughs> but, you, but but prosecutor. Prosecutors, when they prosecute these cases, they play loose with the rules. They did. Yeah, a little bit. I can say I didn't see all of it. I only saw a little bit. But that's something I think any any jurist would do. Yeah, I I, I I watch about four hours. Something in. 
If I tell you you can't introduce some evidence and then you try to introduce it, yeah, you're going to get yelled at. <laughs> Even with me, and I'm pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, I, no, I, 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 that, that judge was that judge was on fire. He was, he, yes, I was watching it actually when he, when he, when he, he said, and and the first time I was like, all right, when he asked the jurors to leave. The second time, and he had the look on his face, I knew he was gonna rip somebody something new. And the prosecutor <laughs> said, "I made a good face, good faith." Yeah. yeah. He 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 ripped them a new uh, yeah he did he did he did um you know novice what, what do you what do you hope people will take from your books so let's let's finish up with that and any final thoughts that you have you know what I'm hoping that people use my novels as a vehicle to explore mental health more to understand how trauma plays a role in our mental health. So that we can try to, you know, make spaces for our children and our family members where they're not experiencing trauma. You know, I think I was saying to you in one of our pre-shows a couple of weeks ago, or a couple, like maybe a week ago, that, you know, I went to a training once about why, you know, um, sexual assault seems to happen in African-American families more often than other families. There's no, nothing that says that that's true. But what we do have is a times where we have a lot of people living with us, family members, people around our children who can harm our kids. We really need to be, you know, cognitive of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that people will learn, you know, about mental health. I'm hoping people will learn more about human trafficking and to try to make sure our children are not victims of that. And, and mostly, you know, on top of it is I want people to know about sickle cell disease and I want people to support all of these subjects with their time, with their money, and with their resources. Mm. Go to my right. website, get my free newsletter. All right, I appreciate that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we had we had been talking to uh, novelist JJ uh, Winston. Um, you know, she is a, an author, she's a novelist, she's a, a, an attorney, she's a judge, and you know, a social worker. And you know what? Most of all, a wealth of information is talk about mental Hello. health and talk about sickle cell anemia and what it's like, how you deal with it. Uh, check her out on um, on her website, which is, again, um, Andrea's just going to pull that up on screen so everybody can reach out to her and talk to her at www.novelistjjwinston.com. God bless you and thank you for joining us in the village. Thank you, Novelist. Thank you for having me. You all have an awesome Thanksgiving, okay? And a wonderful right, you weekend. You too, now. You too. Uh, enjoy right. the, the, the fireplace behind you. Thank you. It's cold, girl. It's about to be a blizzard here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, been clean, and the weather will change every moment. <laughs> you, you know, I, 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 don't worry. It's cold. It's getting chilly out here, too, in New York. Don't worry about it. I, that's why I have to wear my hat. By the way, you like my hat? Yeah, that's right. All right. Thank you, John. It's good to all see right. you guys. Thank you again. All right. Take it, guys. Right. Right. Bye. 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 Bye.